Welcome to part one of a series of Unity tutorials getting started with Steam. My name is Mike Bushell, I'm the developer of Arena 3D and I'm going to share with you all of the knowledge which I've gained by myself into e integrating Steam with uh, Unity. So these videos are going to be beneficial to those Unity developers which are currently going through the Steam Greenlight process and also those who have just been greenlit and are now looking to integrate with Steam into their Unity project for the first time. So I'm just going to use Arena here and showcase you a few features. So nice and simple, the most basic ones up in this top left hand corner which I'll be going through on this first video of how to do. So my display name for Steam up here, we've got a star count which is based on taking some data from Steam stats and uh, turning it into something we can see up there. So I'm going to head into the single player map and just show you a few other quick features. I can highlight a level and it will show our high score there and that will be done by accessing a Steam leaderboard. Um, if you've already become a Steamworks partner, uh, uh, partner through the green light process I'm sure you've already looked through your uh, partner page and seen how to set up leaderboards. So I'm going to head over to the Arena League here, show you a few more features. I'm the only one on this leaderboard at the moment because unfortunately I had to uh, reset all the scores because I've just integrated uh, replay feature and uh, that involves attaching user generated content to a leaderboard entry which is a fantastic way of storing information and makes it accessible to other players with ease. So for example, I can click on my name here and I can go ahead and click view replay and this will download my data from the Steam Cloud. Um, this came out of trying to create an anti-cheat system by recording or sampling all the gameplay frame by frame and making sure everything was consistent. So if I hit an enemy it gave me this many points depending on what multiplier I had at the time and it allows me just to keep tabs on whether all the scores are legitimate. But at the same time it creates a fantastic way that other players can view how the best get their scores. So, pretty cool. I can pause, I can carry on playing, and we can also just go back to the map. So, I'll just shut that down. Another cool thing here I've got my friends list, which is pretty comprehensive here. Um, and what we can do, we can actually click on a player here and we can have a look at his uh, little player card. Um, the guy I've clicked on here, Vidran, he is the creator of the Zotrix games which are brilliant and uh, very much worth having a look at. Um, Vidran was a great help, help to me uh, with Arena in the early days and gave me lots of advice leading up to my Greenlight campaign so I have much to thank, for, much to thank him for. So I'm going to come out of Arena now and I'm going to set up a clean Unity project mm -hmm. where I can go through creating some tutorial stuff for you and I'll go through it step by step. So I've gone ahead and seen Unity and we're going to work on creating, recreating the little header which can be seen in the top left of uh, the arena. So what we have here, we've got a placeholder for our Steam name which we're going to make and we're going to see if we can make our star count appear there. What we're going to use this white square for is we're going to make our avatar appear in there. So to begin with, before you integrate Steam, we need to go ahead and download this fantastic C# -sharp wrapper, uh, which can be found at steamworks.github.io. Uh, it's feature complete as well. I've used it for a lot, of and all we need to do is go to installation, download the Unity package, which I should do now. I've already already installed this but I'll go through the process again so we can click that it'll open up in Steam and we'll be importing all but I've already done this so I'm not going to need to do it again so to initialize Steam in your scene we're going to go ahead and create a new game object we'll call this Steam Manager and what we're going to do we're going to attach Steam Manager and what this will do, I shall open this up in mono. This will initialize 
Steam. Um, and it will start all the callbacks so that we can um, communicate with Steam and also it allows the overlay to work with uh, your Unity project as well. As we know, so you get down in the bottom right hand corner all the notifications about friends, um, achievements being scored, etc. And also, I think it's Shift Tab, we can open up the Steam overlay in game. Before you get started though, you need to go down to line 71 and what you're going to do, you're going to have to put in your app ID here. Um, so to start with, it actually looks like this. I shall just type this in as it was when I first got it. It's app ID invalid. So what you'll need to do, we'll just change that. So it's app ID in brackets and we're going to convert our number to an app ID and mine is 438460 for arena and we save that there and we also need to go to our project root which is tutorial work steamworks tutorials for me and when you install the uh, c sharp wrapper set uh, it will create a steam app id text in here and it will start out life as 480 and what you need to do you need to change that for your app id so now that's all done, let's click save and when we click start we should have no errors down at the bottom down here which is good. So I've already gone ahead and created all of the UE components here and named them and I've already basically constructed a display name script with the UE components which are going to be altered. Um, you want to add this in, which is using Steamworks, that's the namespace, uh, allows us to uh, use all of the Steam components. So what I recommend is that you don't use any uh, Steam functions within Awake because Steam Manager initializes in Awake and if it tries to call a function and Steam Manager is not initialized it's only going to throw up exceptions and errors and it's not going to work. So we're going to use in start and to get the ball rolling we're just going to check that steam manager is initialized and if it is not we're just going to return and that will kill the script well, or that void should I say so first things we're going to get our display name so display name dot text equals steam friends dot get persona name now the good thing about this C sharp wrapper it all contains uh, the hints and summaries well it's it has most of them um, a lot of the functions which uh, I'll be showing on in the later videos don't have summaries and explanations so they can be quite tricky to get your head around um, so you do have to think outside the box sometimes and I've had to use a lot of trial and error but this is what these videos are about and hopefully I can try and shortcut your pain so we've got here display name dot text equals steam friends and we're going to get our personal name so we go ahead and click play and hopefully the name placeholder should change to mike.bushel and there we go so that is our first step into integrating steam right so now I want to uh, alter these stars. I want I want to read how many stars I've got. Now I already know I have four stars in Arena, so I'm going to read those. But before we do that, in order to draw up the data for Steam stats, we need to pass over to it some string data for the name of the stats that we're looking up. So I'm going to call this stat string data. And I'm going to go ahead and create an array of strings. And we'll call this uh, stat strings. Now, I'm going to change that in the inspector now. And let's do that. And I'm going to cycle through the first six stars. So just let the inspector load up here. So we'll change our stat strings. We'll go six now. I already know what mine I've named. Nice and basic star 1, star 2, star 3, star 4. I'm sure you can guess what the next one is. Star 5 and star 6. So again, head and save that. 
So, what we're going to do, I want to count how many stars I've got, so I'm going to create a variable that we can store our counting with, so that's star c. Uh, we'll call this loop through stat strings. So, for each string stat in stat strings, what we're going to do, it's going to output some data. So we're going to put a variable out data equals to zero. And what we're going to do is steam user stats get stat. And it's going to ask us for a string that it's going to send up to the steam client and it's going to get that information for us. So that is going to be stat and it's going to out and we're going to go to our out data. There we go. So the, the data I am searching for, I've stored my star data as ones and zeros. So zero being I haven't got a star, one being I have. So nice and simple in this case, star C plus equals out data. And we shall just set star C to zero before we loop through just to make sure that we're starting at the bottom. So once we've looped through, I'm going to change my star count dot text equals star c to string. Now I know I have four stars, so hopefully when I click play, we should come up with our name and it should say four stars. There we go. Perfect. So that's displaying as it should. So just going to run through quickly on how to set a stat. Um, let's say I want star 5. So what we'll do, we'll just call this, um, I'll just comment it. So we've just scored, let's say a million points. Score of 1 million, set star 5. So what we can do is steam user stats dot set stat and I know it's called star 5 so we're going to put the string and we're going to put the data into it so we're going to call that 1. Now when you call a set stat function it's always good practice to call store stats afterwards um, so this will make sure that steam client uh, will communicate with uh, the Steam servers um, where all the data is stored and make sure it's all up there ready to come back when we need it. Um, it's especially useful for when you're setting achievements um, which I will cover on in probably the next video. So with this set now, um, with these operations being asynchronous um, it may not actually be set in time for when we're looping through our get stat but if your internet connection is great and everything's working fine with Steam, we should, now when we click play, come up with five stars. There we go. So we've set another stat. Star five is now complete and we have five stars in total. So I'm going to go back to mono. And I'm just going to comment that out because uh, we don't need that anymore. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, set avatar image. Now this is a little bit more complicated so I'm going to create a new enumeration and we're going to call this fetch avatar. So I need a few variables before we begin. Now the function for getting uh, the avatar, uh, I believe it is steam user get no, it's, uh, steam friends can't spell today get avatar 
get large friend avatar, which is uh, the largest size we can get, which is 184 pixels by 184. Um, now it's going to ask us for our Steam ID, so I will be I'll show you in the next video how to loop through and find all your friend data, but for this time we're just going to get our own Steam ID and get our own avatar. So Steam user get Steam ID. So the function here, it has a summary, uh, so it is an integer, um, that it's a static int command, so it will return minus one when the image is still loading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this avatar int and avatar int equals steam friends get large friend avatar and then our user ID. So if it's going to be minus one when it's loading I want this enumeration to wait while it's still downloading. So avatar int equals minus one and we're just going to yield return null. So, once it is loaded, it will be something greater than zero, or it will go back to zero if there is nothing available. So, the next check we're going to have is if avatar int is greater than zero. So, that is our first starting point. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to assign a couple more variables. Now these have to be uh, u integers or uint, which is a 32-bit integer, and we're going to have a width and a height. So the next bit we're going to do is Steam Utilities or Steam Utils, and we're going to be getting the image size. Um, now we're going to pass across to it our avatar integer, and we're going to out width and we're going to out the height. So once that's called, we're just going to double check that we've actually got uh, something. So, you know, it's got to be greater than zero. So that's that set there. Um, the data for getting an image will come back in byte array format um, as it's just pure raw data. So what we're going to do, create a new byte array and we're going to call this the avatar stream. And it's going to be a new byte array. Now this is important. Uh, RGBA data, so RGBA, that's four pieces of information there. and there's 184 pixels across and 184 wide. So what we're going to do to make sure that it all works as it should do, we're going to do this by width and by height. So that is our new avatar string. Um, to make sure that we don't have any issues here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert these to standard integers as I have had issues where the 32-bit integer have caused crashes for some reason. I can't put my finger on why. Next bit, we're going to get the RGBA data. So Steam Utils and RGBA, get image RGBA. So we're going to ask for our avatar integer first. And then our avatar stream is where it's going to output its data to. And then we need to do the buffer size, which is, again, very similar and, in fact, almost the same, exactly the same as our byte array length. So I'm just going to copy that and paste that there. And that will now send our data across to there. So the next bit, we're going to create a new texture. So texture 2D downloaded avatar. And that's going to be downloaded avatar equals new texture 2D. No, not terrain. Texture 2D and what we're going to do is 
put our width so let's get the width and then the height our texture format is going to be RGBA32 and there's no mipmap data for um, the avatar so we just put false at the end asking for mipmaps so that is our new texture2d created there's nothing in it at the moment so we're going to go to download the avatar and we're going to load raw texture data and that is going to be our avatar stream which is the byte array data and once that's in we're just going to apply now before we create our sprite we're going to need to create a couple more variables up here and uh, if you've done sprite creation before through C sharp you need to uh, supply these values to it so a new rect and the corner will be 0 and we know it's going to come out in 184 by 184 as we're searching for the large avatar and we just need to go ahead and create a new pivot variable which will be new vector 2 and it's set to the middle of our image So we are going to be altering our avatar image. So avatar image dot sprite equals sprite create. Now we're going to add in our new texture. So downloaded avatar, our rect, and our pivot. So I'm going to save that. So just let you have a quick look at how we do that. Oh, there we go, we need to call it first. So start coroutine fetch avatar. So going across, we have our request for getting the avatar. And we're going to wait while it's downloading. Then we're going to check we've got something other than zero, as zero means we haven't got anything and then using Steam Utilities to get the image size, making sure the image is greater than zero, and then creating the, the byte array, and then we can assign to the byte array using get image RGBA. And then these bits down here are just basic Unity workings. So hopefully now, if I go ahead and click play, oh no, we have an error, so what have I done here? Oh, there we go, missed out some parentheses there. So we click play and there we go. Now this is the interesting bit. The data for the avatar image or whenever you download RGBA images from Steam they come flipped horizontally. Now you, c you can do it by altering um, and running some code through here but by and far the most simplest way of doing this is just flipping left to right using the Y and Z um, rotations here. So just 180 in the Y and 180 in the Z. So there we have it. There's my avatar image there, my name and my star count. Um, I'll just stop that and I'll set that to 180, 180 there. Just double check. Yep that is all still working. So this was part one of the tutorial so just some basics there to get started with um, so we've got setting up with the Steam Manager uh, getting your app ID in there and that's how we're going to initialize Steam and then just some real basics getting our own name learning how to get statistics and set some stats by using this as well and this one I just I think it's quite a nice little touch when you can go in the game and you, we can look at um, a friend's avatar you know it just feels like we're actually connecting with them you know that's, that's why I've included it in arena and it's something it's just a little nice little feature so that is the end of part one in the next video I shall be going into how the leaderboard works and how we can access that information and um, 
also sort of some best practices on how to display that on screen. So this was my very first ever video tutorial. I I hope you've you know learned something from it. Um, any feedback is great. There are a couple of links. I'll put a link to uh, the Steamworks.net wrapper in uh, wherever you see this video. It'll be in the comments somewhere or in the description, um, so it's easy to find. So I look forward to uh, speaking to you all for the next time. Thank you.